Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Genesis Mindset, and it has been a bit of a hiatus. So uh, first of all, if you want to just skip straight to the content, I have put the chapters in the description, so you'll even just be able to click on the YouTube video and skip straight to the information. I wanted to just give a quick update about what's been going on. It's been about two weeks since I've actually done a video for the Genesis Mindset. So the last one that I did was Teddy Bear. And it's been a long time because like I originally said, I only want to bring value to the community. I don't want to bring out videos for the sake of bringing out videos. And one of the things that I wanted to do was actually really dive deep into this Atropa ecosystem. So it was around about that time that the Atropa dev revealed themselves to the world, to the public. And so I've been spending the last few weeks really just reading the entire chat log, which was, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was a, it was a bit of a headache. Uh, cause there's lots of useless conversation, people exiting and entering and it's, it's, it, you know, I'm trying to run a business here. It's a nonprofit organization. I'm running it seven days a week for like from, uh, 8am to 9pm. We're open except on Sundays till four. So it's, it's not exactly easy to try and consume all this content while running a full-time business. So it has taken a lot of time, um, and really to be able to decipher all the different things that. That they're actually talking about so i have a lot of people that i've been having these discussions with uh shout out to sunny's pub sunny's been a great help almighty kick has been a great help well, he's almighty lp now he's been a great help i've been chatting to a few other people they may or may not want to be uh mentioned but uh freedom token 777 has been a real big help um there's there's plenty of you guys out there that i really appreciate you you know who you are daddy wicks is another one you know who you are and i really appreciate this back and forth um, and if I haven't mentioned you, I do apologize, but know that I have appreciated everybody's input. Love Hex is another one. Um, so thank you very much, Paul and Mike, everyone. So anyway, enough with the thank you. So this is why it's been a long time. So I've read the whole chat log and then I read all the summaries, um, but it was just taking way too long. So I'm only up to day 15. I wanted to read the whole thing um, before I actually condensed everything down so i wanted to that's kind of my process of understanding once i add all the information into my mind then i kind of let it settle and then i distill it down and distill it down so that's what i've done i've distilled this whole thing down into something that i feel is probably going to be a very easy explanation for everybody to understand so with that said let's get into the episode but before we get into the episode i do want to just quickly jump into the charts here because while i have been going over everything there is something that i did notice Obviously, this whole thesis of the liquidity between Pulse Chain and Atropa, I mean, at the end, my interest in the Atropa ecosystem is all because it's pumping the Pulse Chain ecosystem. That is the number one thing. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit more once I start going through the episode. But at the start, there was a very direct correlation between the Atropa ecosystem and Pulse Chain. You could see an up, uh, sorry, there was a down, then there's an up in Atropa, and then there was a okay rather there's a big down in pulse chain then there was a big up in a tropa then there was a little up in pulse chain and a little down in a tropa so on and so forth so it was very directly correlated then it kind of decoupled so it wasn't as directly correlated so after this blue line it was it was less correlated so this was up down up down up down up whereas this has basically just been down um so there has been the general ins and out flow. So as things were generally flowing down during this period, they were generally flowing into the Atropa ecosystem. And then as things were flowing out of the Atropa ecosystem, they were generally flowing into the Pulse Chain ecosystem. During this period, there has been a lot of new tokens that have been created. But the one thing that really struck me was this area here, which really was, it's, it was the bottom of Pulse Chain. It looks like it was the bottom of Pulse Chain just below whale sacrifice rates, which really locked in the Atropa ecosystem and the way that it moves with the Pulse Chain ecosystem. So I really, this is something that really clicked with me today that this is kind of where it all really began when it really got tied to each other. So I wanted to just share that because I thought that was, that was actually really cool. So at the moment, I still do think maybe we're a little bit, probably potentially sideways or even more, further downside Ho hopefully not too much further downside but i think definitely sideways uh at least until pulse chain really starts to cool off there's just too many other things going on in pulse chain we had nine inch um fame is still rocking on so there's just too many other things that are going on we got uh, we got rob as well rob which is going to go crack <laughs> kind of crack the btc price so keep an eye out for rob get on your shane surely he's trying to 
he doesn't want to outdo his brother. There's only one, but uh, yes, you got to get an eye on, on the Rob ecosystem there as well. So with that said, let's get into the episode. Okay, so uh, let me just double check that we do have that screen shared. Okay, perfect. So welcome to the Genesis Mindset. Bit of a long introduction there. I do apologize. This is Mindset for Investing, Trading and Life. So this is personal opinion only. This is not financial advice as always. So just take everything that I say with a grain of salt. And today's episode is all about, so hopefully... Hopefully, I'm. Uh, if this all works out, I've got some uh, angel music playing right now. So shout out to Somi for these kinds of ideas. I, I love Somi. He's really just a bag of fun. So today's episode is conversations with the Atropa 414 dev. So obviously, I have done that huge dive. And this is basically everything up to October 21st. So I do feel like this was enough information for me to wrap myself around, wrap my head around everything and be able to deliver it to you. And like I said, it's been an extremely laborious task. So I do hope that you enjoy the episode. So the doxing of the 414. So 414 dev there in the IRC chat that they created is called Maria Rahel. So whether it's a man or a woman presents itself Maria as a woman, but people, are, they've when asked that question, they showed a video of a woman basically saying that they were a man. So no one really knows. Does it really matter? Who really cares? Um, people are hypothesizing that Maria Rahel is a play on words that I am, I am real Richard Hart. Um, so this is just some of the conspiracies that go around. So what they did was they created the IRC token to verify themselves. You can see the kinds of actions that they take. So within within the IRC chat as well, when they say they're going to do something, they end up doing it, and it gets proven in on the blockchain. So everybody knows that this Maria Rahel is the Atropa Dev, and the language that they use in the chat log seems to be very deliberate language also lots of things to throw people off things aren't necessarily obvious there's lots of riddles it's not really something where they want people anyone to just come it really seems like they don't want people coming in to just chase the next token that they're going to make money off it's not really about that it's about developing the ecosystem and it seems like when people ask those kinds of questions that they kind of get thrown off a little bit um, so very interesting the way that the um, the 414 has been communicating with people um, and the chat log basically reveals more information about them you can really find out where they where they hang out if you really want to find that information out um, they did say that they ran the largest university metaverse lab in the world for three years which i found very interesting um, because it actually does lead into something towards the end of this episode and the other thing is when they were asked about the kind of funding that they had any seed funding they said they have enough funding to continue this a tropa ecosystem indefinitely so now i want to actually debunk some of the myths and some of the things that i would have even said in some of the previous videos which you can check out here that weren't necessarily correct so at the time we were just trying to figure out everything that was going on there was lots of people trying to figure this out i was getting my information from the verse i was getting my information from viber finance i was getting my information from wherever i could on telegram and really trying to distill everything and trying to figure out what it was to me as well so about the PDI MakerDAO payment. So the Atropa Dev has said that they had nothing to do with the funds and they only watch Hex. So that debunks that little that little myth. Um, and in terms of the bots, a lot of people saying that they were running these bots, but they actually aren't running any bots. But what we do know is that they actually work with the bots. So they understand how these bots work and they're kind of manipulating the bots to benefit the ecosystem. So they have said, if those assets are liquidity locked, then it gets harder and harder excuse me, harder and harder for the pulse stable coins to go down anyway. It's a solid theory and they are, and the contracts are in place now. So they're basically they were talking about how they manipulate the bots. Well, not, not necessarily manipulate the bots, but basically manipulate's not the right word, but play the game that the bots play. So they have actually done experiments where by seeing what the bots are doing, they've put out this experiment and then the bot actually produce the outcome that they were expecting. So one of the crashes, um, I think it was on Zurich or it was a it was a different, could have been CIA. I don't remember what it was, sorry, but there was a crash that they actually predicted and it happened due to the way the bots worked. No, I think it was Monat Money. 
Okay, so the Atropa ecosystem. So we're going to need to get familiar with a few words before we get into it. It's really a financial system. So I've just taken some of the key uh, terminologies that they've used. So because everything in this ecosystem is intended to have a very specific purpose and it's based based on the way that it's actually derived. So for example, legal tender. So you have the Oljun. So that's the Korean symbol there. So it works like governments, how governments mint dollars and it can be drawn on the treasury bill. So the treasury bill is another contact, a contract. And so everything has a specific purpose. And these legal tenders also are intended to have a later use when there's going to be this client that they're trying to develop. And I'll go into that later. Uh, trusts, so trusts back different currencies. So for example, Teddy Bear backs the treasury bill, which I think backs, uh, there was another token that it backs. I don't remember off the top of my head, sorry. Um, minting, so there's things with different mint functions. So for example, you had the MV token. That has, that's, that had a, <clears throat> excuse me, that was intended to help burn PLS. So different kinds of tokens are designed for different kinds of things within this financial ecosystem. But again, it's all about propping up the whole ecosystem for the benefit of Pulse Chain. And then financial instruments are basically assets that are used and created to manipulate tokens and values, tokens and ratios to again, prop up the whole ecosystem. Okay, so from here on, it's gonna be basically quotes from questions and answers. And I've basically put these in an order that I felt was very logical for people to understand and really distilled the core concepts of what people were actually asking and what the dev is trying to uh, basically communicate with the world so when the dev was asked whether or not the ecosystem was complete they said it feels complete right now as a gambit it is winning the locked liquidity set is designed to provide a token of a capital strategy that is ostensibly better than meme or even stable coins by retaining a fault bottom specific floor for buyers and a largely buffeted loss on sales due to the buyer to liquidity ratio Tokens thus far represent the best of my capacity to define a legal tender complex financial instrument that satisfies all the requirements of the plays on money, including the fears associated with the absolute worst case scenarios. So when you saw that Atropa, uh, Atropa to Pulse, basically they're trying to create this eternal floor. So the worst case scenario fears are things like rug pulls that you get in meme coins. So it's creating this eternal bottom that wants to avoid things like pump and dumps, high volatility, and really minimizing risk for people that are going to enter into the ecosystem. And basically, locked liquidity is really what this whole system is all about. Again, that's why I wanted to show that chart, because it creates this price floor for buyers. And, this, and selling coins has a lower maximum loss due to the ratio between buying and liquidity. Okay, so about buying. So... When they were asked what kind of tokens to buy, because many people ask these kinds of questions, they said the lock liquidities in the Atropa, TSFI, Down, Legal, and L. That's that's a Korean symbol that is L. It's LR together. Contracts are the suggested buyers for the general public. The network of coin liquidities that extend from Atropa are intended to cover a private slash private distribution strategy that honors either myself, long-term buyers, or early buyers. I suggest checking the ownership slash renouncement, liquidity positions and top holders on each tokens. The profitable Easter egg is the minting of the first Pulse Mutual Bond tokens and the recommended buy, in my opinion, is the TSFI token. The TSFI liquidities probably won't be extended without discussion in this channel. So they have been saying that the TSFI token is potentially going to reach $100 by the end of the year and it's the one to most likely have the faster short-term gain. They also have pivoted towards Zurich because that there is basically the top holders who really kind of aren't playing along with the ecosystem. So locked liquidity, it's really important to understand this because this is something that I that really took kind of took me a while to wrap my head around. When you keep reading it, you don't know what it means. So locked liquidity is liquidity that can't be traded or transferred. So it can be done by the 414 by actually renouncing ownership of a contract. That means that that liquidity is locked because no one can access it. It can also be done by people creating liquidity liquidity pools, liquidity pairs, and never actually allowing those, never closing them. So those, those tokens remain in liquidity pools so they can never be traded or transferred 
or once you actually create that liquidity pair, you get this PLP token when you do that. So then you can send that PLP to a debt address and that makes it locked. So in terms of suggested buyers for public versus private, there's really, so private tokens are ones that they're really not, people aren't really meant to buy. So if you don't understand something or if it's in another language, then don't buy it. They also say if it's got a token supply of 666, then probably stay away from that one. There is a lot of warning on that. And they're used basically to manipulate, they're basically used to manipulate and uh, different kinds of tokens and ratios to benefit the ecosystem. So you really need to do your research before buying anything. And it would be good, it would be a good idea to follow these general rules. So, okay, PDI. So someone asked, you say there are separate teams for PUSDC, PUSDT, and have you been in contact with them to coordinate with PDI? So they said, 414 said, I believe someone will show up in the Pulse chain, so the Pulse chain IRC channel that can answer that better than me. I think the ecosystem has covered all the various trust models that currency backers play. That was the goal on having more than one token from the launch. The Atropa launch was initially divided into a hedge fund, TSFI, a work fund, LOL, the savings account, down, and then the legal contract was set up as the initial non-mintable lock device. So from the start, it's been about creating this web of interrelated tokens that are bonded through liquidity. And this is what separates it from other blockchains and other ecosystems. So people have asked me this and I've been trying to dig down like what, what makes this unique to others? What makes it unique is the way that all these tokens from the start, these four tokens, four tokens. So the Atropa token was initially divided into a hedge fund, a work fund, a savings account, and then the legal contract that you couldn't mint. So these four tokens, one divided into four, so they're all bonded through these four tokens. Atropa is bonded through these four tokens. So the reason why something like this can't necessarily work on what makes it unique to something as opposed to Ethereum, Ethereum is already huge. And so this is why this kind of really struck my heart when I saw this started to really sink in when it was at the bottom of Pulse Chain. Ethereum is so big, an ecosystem like this can't really penetrate into the value of Ethereum because it's already so tied up and locked in with all other kinds of liquidity, uh, all other kinds of tokens in the ecosystem, and the value is already so high in Ethereum. So if you think about, you know, Doge, Doge might only be paired with like, DAI or USD or Ethereum. It's not paired with Shiba Inu. It's not paired with um, Mana or Gala or Alluvium or whatever. It's not paired with other tokens. So this is actually designing the liquidity bonding from the floor, from the ground up in an ecosystem that is brand new. So Pulse Chain, it's brand new. It's cheaper to do. It's easier to do. It can have more influence because there's a lot less tokens. So it can really as this whole ecosystem gets buffeted up, it can really pull up the entire Pulse Chain ecosystem. And that's really what it's been all about. That's really something that I was seeing but not realizing in a way about how that could actually happen. Now I'm really starting to see that more and more. So th those were some of my initial quote unquote revelations with this ecosystem was, oh, it's actually going to pump the whole pulse chain but i didn't quite know how i was speculating on all the different ways that it could do it so this was before uh, 414 even came out and said anything this was before i even put any money in it i was just deeply fascinated by this concept and then of course you, i put money into it full disclosure just because it makes it more interesting so they go on to say how exactly it gets paired has a lot of options depending on the philosophy of what you are doing so if you look at how down and a trope are paired the massive locked liquidity in a tropa is significantly less than the originator contract holdings for the token, even as the stables track to one dollar. But every investment into down introduces a greater ratio for the contract originator to eventually cash out. So the contract originator, the 414, doesn't want to dump on the ecosystem, doesn't want to harm the ecosystem, wants actually to benefit the ecosystem in every possible way so that it eventually benefits Pulse Chain. So if they dump on the ecosystem, it's not a good look. People will, will be afraid to put money in. So they're not doing a liquidity grab. What they're trying to do is entice people into utilizing it, but, but then for themselves to slowly and gently get out so that they can then put in into different, into different assets within the ecosystem. So it's constantly creating this web of locked liquidity. The legal tender, the legal token incentivizes the purchases into down because it allows access to produce quality assets like RU 
that will always have greater liquidity than asset value. There is a potential to pave the way there to things like FDIC insurance, etc. The holding positions on down is intended to justify itself over time and is currently at a significant loss from the invested capital. So they're actually losing money on this. I think of a I think of a tropa and down like the originator checking and savings account with the savings expected to see the interest over time, not through minting, but through purchases of the asset only. So this was when somebody actually asked whether or not the Atropa token was designed to be a stable coin. So now they've just gone into some details about what the Atropa token is meant to be. Okay, so this was actually one of my favorite questions. So I think this was from Freedom Token 777. So he asked, when I see what Atropa is with all these coins, PDI to $1, the shifting around of all this liquidity, my mind goes to wave motion, climatology. So mechanical standing, longitudinal transverse waves, fluid mechanics, oscillating frequencies, and somehow liquidity bonding plays a big role in this. Am I going somewhere with these ideas I wrote earlier or am I way off? And 414 answered, excuse me, the operating word the ecosystem is aiming for currently is production. The idea all along has been to map out like a fluid constitution the set of concepts and definitions that make the ecosystem a good investment and currently whether a thus mapped out set of such monetary tied concepts can be can be considered production quality at all so again these financial terms that they're trying to use these finance this financial institution that it's trying to create whether or not this can actually produce value within the ecosystem so Everyone sees it a little bit differently, whether it's waves or vibrations or whatever it is. One thing that the Atropa dev does like is something that more closely resembles nature because nature is beautiful. Nature always works. So anything in this ecosystem that represents something that happens in nature, they're really all for. So they have stated this. So she has even referred to this stage of the ecosystem uh, of the development of the ecosystem as steam. With the next cycle the next uh, stage coming up to be the condensation cycle okay so now somebody asked in relation to the purpose so the purpose of the atropa ecosystem is to steadily and slowly using liquidities and bot transactions pump up the ecosystem of the following tokens majorly atropa teddy bear tsfi p die so they're asking this question or is the final purpose just to bring PDI to $1 and peg it? So there has been this big theory. Is it about the pegging or is it about bringing all these tokens up? They're basically asking. So 414 says, I'm interested in an investment production with momentum. I hope that the liquidity locking currently place the system moving forward, not entirely in any individual control. There are a number of situations that could occur as the networks, as the network becomes more attractive. The ownership on Teddy has been most productive and I could see it taking off first because of the profit to large investors. So basically, again, just reiterating that they're trying to, it's really about decentralization. So the 414 is like the source, but it's the way that people actually interact with the ecosystem and how they lock liquidities and they actually they actually, the 414 rewards people who actually lock liquidity. And so we'll go into a little bit more into what they actually mean by production. So somebody asked if someone had a very large position in PDI or a Tropa and was able to swap liquidity into other assets, what LP would be considered the most valuable and beneficial for them to provide? Beneficial to the Atropa stable ecosystem. So basically they're asking what would be the best thing for the ecosystem to provide. And so 414 says, I think I'm very interested in, in exploring what production quality LP pairs would mean in terms of mechanism. If 100%, if 100% of an asset is placed on LP and that LP, so liquidity pool is transferred so as to be locked and then the asset is purchased back it makes that LP asset production quality, but the threshold is less severe than that. Consider this third party risk scenario. Imagining you have, for example, excuse me, $1 billion in PDI. You create your own asset, lock 50% of your new asset with 50% of your PDI and burn that LP. In my opinion, you have created at that point a production quality asset that could be considered for pairing with the Atropa ecosystem. How exactly it gets paired? 
has a lot of options depending on the philosophy of what you're doing. So this one took me a while to kind of like really wrap my head around it. So uh, basically what they're saying is enough locked assets to have stable trading of cryptocurrency pairs without any huge volatility. That's really what they want. So production quality means. So one way to make a high quality liquidity pair is you put 100% of a new cryptocurrency into a liquidity pool, transfer that pool so it's locked meaning it can't be taken out. And then you buy back the new cryptocurrency from the pool to give it a starting value. Uh, and then what they're saying makes a production quality pair for trading is more and a more extreme, a less extreme method rather. The example that they use is have $1 billion of an existing cryptocurrency. So let's say PDI, then you make a new cryptocurrency asset. So let's say you just make uh, Bob and you make Bob. And then you lock 50% of the Bob tokens up with 50% of the P die, so 500 million P die, and then 500 million worth of Bob. And then you put that into a pool and then you burn or destroy the liquidity pool tokens. And then that would make it production quality, a production quality LP. So basically it's something where eventually they want the weight to be in the favor of more tokens that are locked away or burned than there are to be purchasable. And then this makes, this is always raising the floor of the ecosystem. So making it production, I believe what they're saying by making it production quality is when you've locked those tokens in and then that's lifting up the whole floor of the ecosystem. So it's it's contributing to the production of the overall ecosystem. This bit I'm still, I'll admit I'm not a fully 100% clear and I would love anyone's opinion on this. I would love some clarity on this. If people do have the clarity, please leave it in the comments. Okay, so Easter egg. So basically the 414 does reward people. So one, I think that's really beautiful. So being top holders of any of the tokens uh, with this is all is likely to see more Easter egg style activity in the future. So the goal is to have a cushion versus crash as the stable tight assets in lock liquidity gain value that surpasses the investment. So again, they want to create this forever floor. So the more liquidity that you lock away or burn and it, dis and it, and it is, gets removed from it gets removed from sell pressure. So then they're tokens that can never be sold. So you'll never see a chart that goes boop, boop because this liquidity is locked. So the chart can only ever fall this far. And that's really what you're seeing in the Atropa ecosystem right now. Things aren't, the main assets aren't plummeting. They're kind of, they're kind of bouncing along this, this area here. But if people can want to continue to work with the ecosystem, then they should lock those tokens away so really the ideal the ideal is if you got a lot of money you enter into this ecosystem and then you start locking assets away and the 414 will reward you with tokens that you can act if you prove that you're if you're a benevolent force uh, for the ecosystem uh, so far it's been pretty good i'm still i still expect to introduce more easter eggs in the future probably tied to top holder positions on specific assets at the time so they have actually already done this and they will continue to do this Okay, so now somebody asked from this uh, steady, uh, from this, basically from this phase, would you say that everything is running as smoothly as you would hope? And they answered, I feel like it is an operational success thus far. I hope that as more people become more familiar with the platform, that I can see where the bar for production is and then meet that. So the 414 is always interacting with the ecosystem in a benevolent way. And then the next question was, do you wholeheartedly believe that the Atropa ecosystem that you created is safe and sound for investors? And they said, I think that the locked liquidities pattern and the active holders distribution clears the Atropa orientated tokens as the best investment in crypto today. I must admit, I I cannot, I mean, I'd be biased to say that I agree because I, I have some of the tokens, but yeah, it's definitely something that I agree with because it's not falling below a certain point. So if it doesn't fall below this certain point, then you can really say, and it just forever goes up and it forever goes up as this web of uh, as this web of tokens keeps growing, then you'd have to say that it would be one of the best investments in crypto if you can see the future of it. And if you can see that it's going to keep lifting your tokens up. If you degen into lots of random tokens, then that's kind of, if you're not doing it properly, that's a losing game. So the next stage is stability and steady growth. That's really what we're trying to do. It moved up so fast, so quick, 
and now we're just kind of setting setting down cooling off so a few a, a lot of those tokens a few of those tokens hit liquidity bubbles so that's why they had these big drops so things have been really cooling off um but it's really it really looks like a lot of different languages are being also used so this is quite interesting and being used and intended to attract invest investors from other countries as well and a lot of these assets are really being produced to have a future use case so this is something that i'm going to get into now so the future so somebody asked in your opinion do you feel that the atropa e ecosystem will be one of the main catalysts for this upcoming bull run and may likely lead the way and they said i think we are making i think we're making a case for the best investment in crypto if that proves true then we'll see improved asset inflow so this is something that i oh this is something that i do really i'm really hopeful of i'm 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 starting to see the evidence of it but over time we'll see more and more evidence of that and then well the the next question was well there are multiple methods but essentially rewarding the long-term holders who delay gratification over the swing traders who push the pump and dump i think it does serve a purpose in retention so this person was basically making a statement and uh that basically uh rewarding people who are long-term holders delaying gratification so these are richard hart principles um rather than swing trading so just buying the tokens to eventually dump them the the ecosystem wants to reward people who hold and lock liquidity so really the ideal person in this ecosystem is somebody who buys tokens and then somebody who locks liquidity forever and just becomes a part of the ecosystem and then also swing trades as well because of course no one's just going to come into the ecosystem and lock liquidity forever and there's no there's nothing in it for them there needs to be an incentive for people to attract people so you can lock liquidity by just simply keeping it in your wallet and then just living off the fees that's 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 an interesting area that i'm really i'm really exploring and creating lots of different liquidity pools so i'm going to be making more videos of that i have discovered more information about that um, or you can you can do percentages. So you could say, well, I'm just going to keep a percentage of my portfolio in lock liquidities and a percentage I'm going to be in swing trading. So I'm going to, you know, buy the bottoms and sell the tops. So this is how markets work. And I see no issue with that. But really, if you're just coming in to buy, buy bottoms and sell tops, then you're kind of, yes, you're okay to do that. There's nothing wrong with that, actually. But the ultimate person is someone who even just one third of what they buy locks the liquidity forever because the long term is if you lock that liquidity away you're contributing to how low it can go so you're contributing to how much it can pump as well that's the thing so if you have that mindset that your actions will actually benefit the whole ecosystem and at the same time you that's the ideal participation in this ecosystem so really as trust in the contract creators grows and at the moment i definitely have trust in 414 they haven't done anything they haven't done anything to harm the ecosystem so far they've only proven to be benevolent in my opinion so hopefully there'll be more locking of liquidity that outweighs the holders okay so now they really talk about this 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 client that's coming up in the future so there is a client and there's basically They want to develop a client, an off-chain client. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer client that people can interact with, with each other on. And, but they're not really sure about what the utility of this is just yet. But interestingly enough, if you have noticed with Go, uh, gohex.com, one of the things you can do on there is download a client which interacts with the hex. So you can actually do your stakes through a web a Windows uh, client, a Windows application. So this is something that they want to do as well. Some kind of offline, off-chain rather, Windows slash Android application that you can install and interact with the ecosystem with. They have spoken about how this could be a game, which with their background in Metaverse, this is really something that I'm really interested in because I'm also interested in Metaverse. This is part of my channel. So this is like, wow, amazing. So it could be a game that draws in a new wave of users. So they've talked about things like killable monsters, loots, rewards. So for example, using mintable tokens could be something where uh, basically people are attacking this boss and then it these as they're attacking, more people are attacking this token is getting minted, minted, and then they get rewards from this token. So really um, taking this idea of the blockchain to another level of just creating money. So really trying to bring a new use case. So they have mentioned that they're also interested in the CAW core, which is like a social network. Um, and basically using like a second layer where you can store this kind of information on. 
uh, a social element as well. They're really interested in some kind of a leaderboard that you can actually see. So you have some some kind of a online presence. You can see that, for example, with the Fox ecosystem, you can see that who are the people who are actually making the most amount of money. And this is really interesting. People like this kind of stuff. So I actually really like that idea as well. Uh, and what can you do to help? So basically what they're looking for at the moment is a mock-up of ideas about how to actually present these ideas to people in this client. So for example, they are thinking of things like um, someone, anyone who has like five to $20. So this, this level of participant, they can just come along, go, go to this client and it can be off chain. They can just see where, what they can buy and where, how their money is connected into the ecosystem. Like what's the depth of, if I put $20 in, into this token, okay, that token, is paired with this, 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 and this. So you can see like, oh, okay, then I can flip it between this token when this token starts to go down too much and I can flip it between this. So it's all interrelated. And again, it's all about liquidity bonding. It's all about arts law. It's all about really raising the floor of everything. And if people are locking away their liquidity, it's always going to keep raising the floor, which is something that I'm extremely excited about because if this ecosystem, which is brand new, can prove to be something that has a forever bottom, what does that mean with Pulse Chain? Because it's so it's so uh, intimately bound with Pulse Chain and also Hex. It's intimately bound now with the Richard Hart ecosystem. It wouldn't be able to have this impact on Ethereum. It wouldn't be able to have this impact on Cardano. It can only have this kind of an impact because this is a brand new blockchain. So it can create this forever floor, which can spill over into the main assets. That's what makes it so exciting. That's why, in my opinion, whether you're a maxi or not, I have all the Richard Hart tokens. I got way more of them than I do of these tokens. But for me, that's what makes this so exciting because it's something that just, it just, it, it's just fascinating. It's deeply fascinating as a thing to learn. And it has been a headache. It has driven me nuts. It's taken like, oh my God, like it took two weeks. It took so many hours, like every day reading this thing for like two or three, four hours. It, it, it like, it did my head in. Um, but thank you very much. I hope I've been able to distill it. I hope I've been able to present it to you in a way that makes sense. Like I said, it's not the full amount of information, but it is enough for now, I think, to actually put that out. And I'm going to keep keep you updated on that information. And please, if you have other things that you know about it, connect with me on all my social platforms. So probably Twitter is the best at coexists even. So please, I'll, I'll even leave that in my description. Please go there. Please connect with me. Uh, also in Telegram, you'll see me in Sunny's pub. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Really. I mean, this was a, this was a, it was a full on episode. It was something that took me a long, long time to put together. I do hope that it's actually delivered some kind of a value to you. I do hope that it makes a lot more sense. Even as I'm delivering it, it even is starting to make more and more sense in my mind. Like I said, I'm not an I'm not an expert. I'm not a dev. Um, I'm not a coder. I have dabbled in coding, so there's things that I don't fully understand. There's probably things that I got wrong. Please correct me. I'm totally open to being corrected. I'm actually trying to provide some value to the whole ecosystem. I'm trying to provide value to the Pulse Chain ecosystem and the Atropa ecosystem. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to be creating contracts and understanding from that perspective. This is what I feel that I can offer. I can get the get the totality of the information and present it to you in a way that's logical and ordered because that that's my talent. That's what I'm good at. So that's what I've devoted my time to. So I really hope I've been able to provide some value and I hope in turn somebody else can provide some value towards this video that actually adds to it because this is what it's all about. This whole Atropa ecosystem is all about us working together. That's what this whole Pulse Chain ecosystem is about. That's what Richard Hart is all about. That's what decentralization is all about. That's what I'm all about. That's what you're all about. So thank you very much, everybody. If you haven't liked and subscribed, I would love if you like and subscribe. I would love any kind of requests for content. So once again, thank you very much. Have a good weekend.